wrong. I have failed. I have moved about this world of ours. And ever in search of the finest of its kind, we bring you the tops in Spine Chillers. The Creaking Door. The manufacturers of State Express 3-5 Spilter King cigarettes take pleasure in presenting The Creaking Door. Good evening, friends of the Creaking Door. The Creaking Door is open. So do come in. Have you ever wished for anything? I'm sure you must have done. But supposing your wish were to come true, would you really like it? Or would there be certain little strings attached? Ask Bella. And she knows. And she thought she had three wishes. But now she wishes that she hadn't wished. <laughs> Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. Darling, it's a sort of pendant. I don't know what the stone is. It might be jade. But it's more translucent than jade, isn't it? Anyway, the price I paid for it couldn't possibly be jade. I wonder what it is. Let's have a look. Well, it's certainly an odd-looking thing. This must be some sort of inscription, I suppose. Mm, I suppose it. The man I bought it from didn't know anything about it. Well, where did you buy it? Off one of those barrows down by the docks. You know, in Michael High Street. Just took my fancy and it was so cheap. I'm pretty sure it is Greek, you know. Looks like Greek characters. I'll ask Ferguson to translate it. Is he a Greek scholar? Of sorts. Archaeology is his hobby, so maybe he'll know what it says. Well, it's uh, difficult to access it, age, Harold. Might be almost anything. I, I suppose they could do it with radioactive tests or something, but I'm not equipped for that sort of thing. No. It's pretty worn in places. Uh, can you make out what the inscription says? Oh, yes, I can, but I can't make any sense out of it. Well, for better or worse, this is what it says. Uh, Pandora's box is open and evil uh, blows abroad, but I am good and evil. Beware, I will grant thee three wishes, but the price must be paid... And I am the one who chooses the coinage. <laughs> now, what on earth is that supposed to be? <laughs> I told you, I don't know. More than likely, it's some sort of ancient talisman, you know. Good luck simple. Although, it does say that it'll grant you three wishes. So what 
What earthly harm can it do? I'm just telling you what Ferguson told me, that's all. But you don't believe in that sort of nonsense, do you? I don't know. All I know is that one never gets something for nothing in this life. But you don't really believe that it would grant a wish. Oh, come now, Harold. You're going back to your nursery days. Aladdin and his lamp and all that nonsense. In bygone times, magic was more of an everyday thing than it is today, you know. Do you really believe that? Well, I don't disbelieve it. Odd things have happened throughout history, you know. Things that nobody had ever satisfactorily explained. Take witches, for instance. Now, there's definite proof that they really did exist once upon a time. Oh, you're ridiculous. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamed of in your philosophy. Remember that, Bella. Oh, well, by all means, if you want to, but don't start wishing for anything, because you might be sorry if your wish is granted. If only I'd listened to him. Harold would be alive today if I'd listened to him. But I didn't, you see. That's why I had to kill him again. Even after he was dead. I had to kill him. You see, one day... Harold and I were talking. Things hadn't been going so well for us for a couple of months or so. We were starting to get into debt. I wasn't fully aware of it at the time, but I know now that that thing brought its own personal aura of evil. It was all around us, like a spiritual swamp. There was just bad luck and disaster. Vaguely in the air. It's all very well you telling me to economize. But how? Well, I don't know how. That's your job. You run the house, or you're supposed to. Oh, for heaven's sake, we live like beggars as it is. I just can't cut down anymore. Well, you've got to, and that's all there is to it. I'm going to have a drink. Do you want one? No, thanks. We can't afford them. Oh, stop being childish with me now. Well, what do you expect me to do? Wave my little magic wand and all of a sudden there's plenty for everyone. Look, I'm worried about things. Can't you understand that? All of a sudden, somehow, we just haven't got enough money. I wish I had a thousand pounds. I wish you could wave your magic wand. Let's try the pendant. The what? The pendant. The thing on my neck. Remember? It grants wishes, but beware of the consequences. Who cares about the consequences? Hmm. Either I don't believe in it at all, in which case wishing would be a waste of time, or else I believe in it completely, and I believe that we wouldn't get our wish without some sort of tragic follow-up. We don't know enough about these sort of things. All right, you're the boss. You'll have to get your thousand pounds from somewhere else. I couldn't sleep either. I'm not tired. Oh, what on earth are you sitting up like this for? It's so cold down here. Fire's nearly dead. Yes, it is cold. Come on, darling, cheer up. Things can't be that bad. They are that bad, Bella. I've... I've embezzled money from work, Bella. From what? Not a great deal. 730 pounds, to be precise. Uh, I've taken it in small amounts over the last two months. That's how we've managed to keep out of trouble. Oh, no. Yes, I'm afraid so. The auditors are going through the books. They're bound to find out in the next day or two. But is there nothing you can do? Can't you borrow the money somewhere and pay it back? No, no, I'm afraid not. We don't know anyone who could lend us that kind of money, do we? A talisman? That's true. What about that? <laughs> You mean wish for the money and expect it to drop down the chimney or something? Well, it's probably nonsense, I know. It can't do any harm. Can it, it can. That's just the point, isn't it? Oh, for goodness sake, are we just going to sit here and mope and let them arrest you tomorrow, or whatever they do? Well, if you put it that way, it does sound pretty spineless, doesn't it? Well, I'm going to make a wish. I'm going to go and get that thing from my jewelry box upstairs. And we'll both hold it and make a wish. Oh. 
I went upstairs and I got the things for my jewelry box. I went back down into the lounge. And the two of us sat on either side of the dying fire. At first, we felt a bit self-conscious and silly about it. But as we both held the peculiar green-colored stone, and as our fingertips touched, I was aware of a presence. An evil presence, I know that now. We sat there by the fire, and we wished for enough money to get Harold out of the jam that he was in. Well, nothing seems to be happening, does it? Well, I suppose you've got to keep it tired. As you said, we can't expect the money to drop down the chimney, can we? I feel a bit silly now, don't you? I don't know. Empty, too. I feel sort of empty. Yes. Well, nothing's happening, is it? I suppose we'd better go to bed. Yes, all right. You'll feel better in the morning. I wonder. The next morning, I got Harold off to work the same as usual. That was the last time I saw him alive. Until he came back from the grave, I mean. Then about three o'clock in the afternoon, there was a knocking at the front door. Somehow, don't ask me how, but somehow I knew this was it. I knew that the pendant had done its work and granted our wish. Yes? Mrs. Charles. Sergeant. Come through here, Mr. Ashley. I'm afraid you must prepare yourself for a shock, Mrs. Charles. What I have to tell you is rather bad news. About Harold, isn't it? Is it? He's had rather a bad accident at work, I'm afraid. One of the machines... He's dead, isn't he? His jacket was unbuttoned. Somehow the coat got caught up. Death must have been pretty instantaneous. Oh. Although the body was pretty badly battered, I'm afraid. Oh, no. Oh, no. What am I going to do? Oh, poor Harold. Because of the nature of the accident, he'll be covered by workman's compensation, of course. I've been on to them, as a matter of fact. Money? Oh, yes, of course. There would have to be money, wouldn't there? Not a great deal, I'm afraid, but... Well, enough to help tide you over this bad patch. Just a minute. How much? Plus minus seven hundred and thirty pounds, Mrs. Charters. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders. And the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. starts to get greedy. Poor Harold. But our story isn't over, is it? There are still two wishes to go. Aren't there? <laughs> Doctor, 
I couldn't do anything. Then I began to be obsessed with the idea that somehow this locket was responsible for the whole business. I should have thrown it away. I know that now. I didn't. I went to see Harold Spring. Mr. Ferguson. I was terribly distressed to hear about Harold Bella. Somehow one doesn't expect these sort of accidents in this day and age. It wasn't an accident. Uh, I beg your pardon? It wasn't an accident. It was this thing. I don't understand you, I'm afraid. Do you remember this? Just a minute. Yes, yes, of course I do. Harold brought this to me to read the inscription some time ago. And the inscription says something to the effect that it will grant a wish, but beware of the consequences. That's right, isn't it? Something like that, yes, Bella. But surely you don't mean to tell me that you believe in that sort of thing? I didn't. Not for a second did I believe it until Harold and I tried it out one night and... Look what's happened. But you surely aren't connecting the accident which led to his death with any silly wish you might have made. Things like good fairies and wishing wells just don't exist these days. But you believe that they did exist once, don't you? Oh, I don't know, Bella. Lots of unexplained things in antiquity, you know. This is printed. This is very old, isn't it? This is a remnant of antiquity, isn't it? Yes, I know, but really, believe me, these sort of things don't happen anymore. Well, Harold and I wished for 730 pounds. The next day, he was killed. And the workman's compensation paid out 730 pounds. How do you explain that? Well, there's only one explanation, isn't there? Absolutely a million to one coincidence. If you really believe that, and I don't think you do, then there's nothing more to say. But if you don't believe it, perhaps you'll give me your advice. <laughs> when one reaches my age, one is always giving advice. People seldom take it, but we still enjoy giving it. Go ahead, what's on your mind? What could go wrong? If I were to wish for things to be exactly as they were before we got the talisman. Well, now, that poses a bit of a problem. In order to answer it, we'd have to assume that this thing does work, that it does grant wishes. All right, let's assume that. I know it does anyway. Yes, well, the point is that anything which has power only has power within terms of its nature. Do you understand what I mean? Not really. Oh, take a motor car. It's within its nature to travel along the road. Therefore, it has power within terms of this nature. But it can't, um, well, fly, for instance. It can't use its power to build houses. Do you follow me now? Yes, I think I do. Go on. Therefore, this stone would not be able to take you back to the time before it was in your possession. That would be out of its province, so to speak. Yes, I see. But, but supposing that I wished the things were as they were before we actually wished. What then? The pendant was in our possession, but we hadn't used it. But again, the same thing would apply, my dear. You see, this is a magic stone, let us assume. Magic as it was understood when this stone was fashioned. Well, philosophies and viewpoints were much simpler things then. And I'm pretty certain that time travel had never been envisaged. Putting it simply, you mean that the stone wouldn't know what I was talking about? <laughs> That's putting it very simply, but you've grasped my meaning. But can it do any harm to try? And again, we come back to the nature of the stone. If time travel is in its power, then it might very well be capable of transporting you back. But, uh... You must be careful, you know. Beware of the attendant dangers when the wish is granted, you mean. That's right. The warning is quite explicit. If you believe in this stone's magic power, then you must also believe that only evil can come when the wish is granted. I went back home and I thought about what Ferguson had said. It was quite late at night before I finally made up my mind. But at last I did. I sat in the lounge. A fierce storm was raging outside. And I held the pendant between my legs and my Again, I started to feel the evil. Like a physical manifestation of evil. I ignored it. And I wished. I wish. I wish that things were as they were. 
before Harold and I made that wish. I wish we had 730 pounds. There, I've done it. Harold, you're back. You're back from the dead. Back from the dead? What are you talking about? From the storm. The storm is the what storm? What are you talking about? There hasn't been a trace of rain all evening. Oh no. Well, nothing seems to be happening, does it? I think what's the matter with you? We decided to make the wish, remember? We wished for seven hundred and thirty pounds. Yes, of course. That's right. Yeah, I feel a bit silly now. Empty too. I feel sort of empty. Well, nothing's happening, is it? I suppose we'd better go to bed. Yes, all right. You'll feel better in the morning. I wonder. Bella, did you ever have the feeling that something had happened before? And that's what happened. The stone took us back in time, all right. But nothing changed. I had to live through it all over again. I tried to stop Harold from going to work, but I couldn't. It was inevitable, you see. He went to work, and at three o'clock the next afternoon, the same man came around and told me that my husband had been killed in an accident. And they were paying out 730 pounds. After that, I was hardly a person at all. I sat at home. Stared into the fire. And stared at the pendant. The stone that had brought me so much sorrow. I was lonely, Doctor. Terribly lonely. And it came to a head last week. Tuesday night. It would have been our wedding anniversary. We would have been married 11 years. I sat in the lounge, as usual, and looked at the fire. Oh, Harold. My Harold. What did I do to you? <laughs> Who can that be? People don't come visiting at nine o'clock at night. In any case, who'd want to visit me? Well, let me tell you, Bella, I, I don't know what possessed me to come over tonight. They're coming anyway. I, I was feeling in the absolute depths of loneliness of Miss Bella. I've been thinking about Harold all day, and I suddenly remembered that last year I helped him choose an anniversary present for you. It is your anniversary, isn't it? It would have been. I've bought us a drink. Come on, you've got to cheer up, you know. Life goes on. Yes, all right. Yes. Yes, I'd like to have a drink with you. Oh, it was good of you to come. Yes, let's have a drink. Let's have several. And we did have several. So many, in fact. At least I did. By the time it got to nearly midnight, we were both of us very talkative. I suppose Ferguson's visit had cheered me up to a degree. At least that's what I thought. But when the superficial sort of chatter wore off, I realized that it hadn't really. I was still terribly lonely for Harold. Was very good to me. A fine man. Let's drink to him. You still got that pendant? If I have, somehow, I can't get rid of it. I would hate anyone else to get their hands on it, you know. I feel somehow that while I have it, it can't harm anyone else. Where is it? I wear it all the time. I'm not outside my dress. Here. Want to look at it? No, no. I, I just wondered where it was. Even from here, one can see how beautiful it is, can't one? Beautiful and evil. Do you know, even if I hold it now, I can feel the evil again. I don't know what to make of it. It's a sort of warmth, you know. I beg your pardon? It seems to... Oh, I sort of burn my fingers. 
do. Uh, I yeah, shouldn't but... have mentioned the wretched thing. Put it away, Bella. Oh, Harold. Oh, dear, dear Harold. How oh, I loved you. I love you still, wherever you are. I'll always love you. Oh, Harold, how I wish you were back again. <laughs> oh, Harold, what have I done? Ferguson, what have I done? I didn't mean to do it, but I wish Harold was back again. And that was the last wish. It can't be. It can be anything. You know that. For heaven's sake, you can't let him in. Do you think I'm afraid of my own husband? But he's been dead for four months. I don't care. I love him. I'm coming. Bella, don't do it. Just think what he must look like. Oh. I come back, Bella. You brought me back. Why did you bring me back? I can't start to describe to you what I saw there. But it wasn't my Harold. Not the Harold that I was like. Somehow I managed to grab a paper knife off the table in the hall. I stabbed it. Again and again I stabbed it. You wouldn't believe, Doctor, how difficult it is to kill something that's already dead. But I did. At last I managed to kill the thing that had been Harold. And it's still real. That was the last of my wishes. That's the end of the story. possess an old pendant with funny writing on it. Whatever you do, don't make a wish while you're holding it in your hand. Think what happened to poor Bella. <laughs> in world class. Get the taste of new smooth Steak Express 3.5s today. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. It's a blend that has been perfected after years of constant research by our master blenders and the recent development of an entirely new process which gives you an even smoother 3.5 smoke. We promise you, it's the smoothest cigarette you can get. Move in world class. Get the taste of new smooth State Express 3.5s today. This is your host back again. Just a reminder of our rendezvous next week. Where are we going? Through the creaking door, of course. <laughs> the manufacturers of State Express 3-5's Filter King cigarettes invite you to listen next Saturday at 9 o'clock when they will again present The Creaking Door.